Genesis 4.26 Ulashit gam hu yulad ben Vaikra et shamo enosh Az hu chal likro b'shem hasham And to Seth also he Here's a hofal um, from Yalad to begat. Since it's hofal, to him was begotten a son. Uh, so this seems like using a kind of verb to avoid talking about his wife. And he called his name Enosh. Enosh is kind of interesting because it's the word uh, for man or human being. It's a different word than Adam, different uh, than that, but used in a very similar way for human being. So here Seth calls his son Enosh. His son is human being, and his dad is Adam, human being. Then, and there's no subject supplied, so oftentimes they, uh, translators will supply the word people here to go with this um, phrase phrase has a sense of and beginning to call. So, and people, or and they, beginning to call on the name of the Lord. So here we have uh, a verb from kof, resh, aleph. Looks very normal. The only unusual thing is instead of a holam, we have a comets, and that's because it's a lamed hey verb. This is a kal, vav consecutive, imperfect, 3ms. The subject being Seth. And Seth called. So here we have the first time that a male names a child. And so perhaps that explains why we have this very unusual kal passive verb uh, in order to um, keep the focus on Seth. And... One other interpretive thing that's uh, of a little bit of interest here is that whoever it is began to call on the name of the Lord. And so this raises an awful lot of questions for, of course, in Exodus chapter 3, uh, the Lord there tells Moses that he's for the first time presenting his name. So the question here is, are people calling on the name of the Lord or... Um, because this term is similar to profane, uh, some ancient Judaic interpreters took this to mean these are profaning um, the name of the Lord by turning to false gods. And so, uh, just like we've seen throughout these first few chapters of Genesis, there's so many uh, challenges. Samuel Sandmill uh, wrote an article on this verse, and he said, quote, uh, that... He could have called his article a history of reading difficulties into the text. And uh, that's very much what we find um, often going on because of the ambiguities in this uh, wonderful story.